Thank you. Hi, hello, how are we doing? Oh, yeah, cool, hi, hi. Oh, it's hot, okay. Um, so someone recently told me that the drought was over. And I was like, oh no, now I'm just not showering because of clinical depression, <laughs> right? Like I used to be an activist. <laughs> Uh, I know that the drought's not over. Everything's on fire right now. It's a huge bummer. Uh, which makes me think that the apocalypse is upon us, right, friends? The end is coming. Uh, does anyone else have an apocalypse strategy or go bag? Oh, my friends, you need to be more prepared. Um, I recently rethought my apocalypse strategy. That's right. My first one was to just kill myself. Mm -hmm. That's right, I did not like life on normal. There is no way I was going to be into survival mode. Uh, but like I said, I've recently rethought it and now I have decided to live. That's right. Yeah, you're fucking welcome. I have decided to live just long enough to eat another human being. Yeah, gonna bucket list the fuck out of that. I thought about that a little bit more. I'm like, is this the only way you're gonna cook for yourself? That's weird. <laughs> um, but as soon as I eat the other person, right, I'm gonna slit my wrists in a bathtub of marinade and give back to the community that was so generous to me. That's right, thinking about the future, just very short term. I don't know if you can tell, but I'm a depressed person. Yeah, are you depressed? No one? I mean, look outside, come on, pick something, you know? Um, but as a depressed person, uh, I have decided that I need to kind of reframe depression so I can live a little bit better with it, right? That's exciting. Like lately, I've been saying that I can do super fun depressing stuff, right? Yeah. Which sounds like it doesn't exist, but it does. Like lately, I've been locking myself in my room in the dark, of course. And just watching a ton of Netflix, yeah. Not chilling, 100% anxious all the time. Uh, so I was a kid, I was a cutter. Yeah, I was a teenage girl in the 90s, it was the law. But since then, I've ordered a stick and poke tattoo kit from the internet, and now my self-harm is beautiful artwork. Heck yeah, I did that. It's a wish bomb. Um, and this is an interesting thing that came out of my most recent bout of depression. Just started eating healthier. Yeah, it was weird. This was the logic. It's like, hey, you're miserable already. How about some greens? <laughs> right? It's like, maybe that's all you deserve is just flavorless leaves. Yeah, it turns out self-care does not have to be fun. It just has to be good for you. Yeah, you guys seem bummed out. We're going to keep going. Um, this actually turned into three days straight of eating vegetables. Yeah, I've never felt so profoundly sad and yet so physically virile. Yeah, do not know if that's the right word. Do not have a lot of language for feeling alive. Yeah, oh, you guys look real bummed out now. Um, I will say this, I've discovered that you cannot make depression cozy, right? Don't keep it in bed, don't fill it with snacks, you gotta get out there and get out of your comfort zone. Participate in life. And I was like, yeah, that makes sense, right? Because what's the worst that's gonna happen? Is it gonna kill me? Good, saves me the trouble. Right? It's a little bit of a bummer. Yeah, that's okay. Uh, so don't let this hip haircut fool you. Yeah, I consider myself pretty old fashioned. Like I subscribe to the philosophy that the best way to a man's heart is through his stomach. Have you heard that old adage? Do you believe it? I do, because you go through the stomach, right? Go up, clown down, that's how you get the heart. There's no direct route, there's a breastplate. You can go through that. You and that works on anybody. Like, that's like man in the universal sense or something. I also think that behind every great man is a great woman, right? Using him as a human shield. Yeah, it's gonna keep coming like this, guys. Um, protect yourselves, ladies, we're gonna make it. I think that I came up with the best response to catcalling. Do you want to hear it? Yeah. Of course you do, I have the microphone. <laughs> so you're walking down the streets and you hear tits or whatever. I don't know, I wear headphones. Uh, but you respond with, everyone's beautiful in the eyes of God. 
And then I promise you, everyone within earshot will never speak to you again. <laughs> what a fun time, right? Yeah. So on a positive note, this is the mightiest I've been in my entire life. Pretty exciting. I get to say mighty now instead of fat. <laughs> uh, because I'm also reframing weight gain, everybody. What a good time. I thought that was just what you did as an adult. You just gently expand like the universe. It's science. Yeah. I know, get on board, right? <laughs> um, the other thing is that I ate 100 burritos in 100 days once. Indeed, I am the hero you deserve. Uh, and at that time, I got really into the body positive movement because I realized the miraculous things that could happen to your body when you truly love yourself. I've also been growing as a person, and no one seems to care about that. <laughs> right, like my body is heavier, but my spirit is so light. <laughs> yeah. Uh, at the mightiest I've been, I thought that this is a great time to start dating. Why not? Right, like what a good deal. 50% more of me at no additional cost to you. <laughs> that, my friends, is a bargain. Um, as a lady type person, I've been saying genders as types, like Pokemon, right? Because then you have the first original 150 genders, and then you get to discover more every year. What a fun time. Anyway, as a lady type person who has sex with the men type people, I have decided at 35 years old that there will be no miracle of medicine and science taking root in this womb, which is just a long way to say I don't want to have kids. <laughs> Um, I actually took to the internet, I took to the internet to find evidence to support my decision. Found, some, uh, found out some terrifying stuff, guys. Uh, so if I have a girl type baby, my, dog, my brain structure, the stuff in charge of emotional regulation, gets imprinted on the brain of the baby girl. So unless you want another suicidal bipolar alcoholic out there, maybe donate to my GoFundMe to remove my eggs. <laughs> if I have a son, my son's DNA gets in my brain. Do you my son's DNA come from? The fucking dude who put him in me. I don't want that dude's DNA anywhere near my brain. I don't want to fucking swallow. You know what I mean? Gets close to your brain that way. Anyway, uh, but any, like any responsible, sexually active person, I have two forms of birth control, right? Those are the rules. Uh, my first form of birth control is just being me. That's right. A little too weird for anyone to want to stick their dick in this, which is just fun to yell at strangers. Second form of birth control is, you might have guessed it, that's right, I'm banging ladies. Hell yeah. <laughs> that's right. Uh, once a year, I have a crush on a woman and I'd be like, lead me out of the darkness of heterosexuality. <laughs> and then I'll fall on a dick and be like, huh, what? <laughs> Yeah, try not to do that second part. Uh, but this has made me think that sex is like the program Excel. I know you guys spreadsheet, you're gonna follow this, don't worry. Uh, so sex with men is like a quick alpha sort, right? There's a button, top right, boom, you're done. And then sex with women is like, pivot tables? Like, do I need to take a class? Um, so I did. Uh, I don't know if that's the nerdiest or creepiest thing that I've done, but I did not get a certificate, yeah. I'm just walking around lying on my resume again. It's like where I may lack experience. I think I have the enthusiasm and dedication to bring something really good to this team. It does not go well, <laughs> bro, it does not go well. Um, as a, a late blooming bisexual lady, uh, I don't really have a lot of explanation for it except for this one story. Uh, there was this one time in fifth grade where I ate like a Costco pallet full of croissants, just like 12 to 16 croissants straight. And then I never wanted a croissant again. So it's like that, but with dicks. <laughs> right, it's like nothing wrong with croissants, I've just had my fill. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's fun, right? Because it's a play on words, it's okay. Um, the other thing is that I noticed in my set, there's a lot of gendered language, and it's really awkward when you come to places like San Francisco who are very well versed in gender theory, I just know that I am too immature to come out and say like, yeah, I'm a pansexual because it will always be followed with like, yes, I do have sex with pants. <laughs> and those handles are useful. <laughs> what a fun time. Uh, the dating does not go well, but that's okay. I have the vastness of the internet, right? What a fun time that is. That's right, pornography, that's what I'm talking about. 
Uh, I recently found my most favorite pornographic film. Yeah, we're going to talk about it. <laughs> it was one dude and two ladies, and it seemed like the two ladies did not realize the other was going to be there. Yeah, because they started getting super competitive. Like they started boxing each other out of frame, and then one girl started the girl and girl action and just got swatted away. And then the obvious alpha of the two ladies started barking orders at the beta. She was like, yeah, you suck that dick. And the beta was like, I'm gonna. <laughs> and at that point, I realized I removed my hands from my pants. I've been watching like this the whole time. <laughs> I was like, this is just as good as Game of Thrones, guys. What a fun time. Do you want to hear one more really gross joke? Yes. Yeah, cool. Uh, so I was sucking this dude's dick once, right? Uh, and he said to me, you suck a good dick. I said, no, I suck a mediocre dick well, and that is how those words work. Thank you so much, guys. <laughs>